Welcome to Thriver TV, the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings. Sexual attraction and addiction are very powerful things. A narcissist knows how to trigger that within you. It can be very hard to understand why you may be feeling the compulsion to keep having sex with a narcissist, even though he or she is treating you horribly. How can relationships be so compelling horizontally yet so painful vertically? This is exactly what we're exploring in today's Thriver TV episode. But before we get started, I'd just like to thank all of you for supporting the Thriver mission by subscribing to my channel and raising awareness that yes, we can now heal from narcissistic abuse for real. All right, let's get going on today's episode. What is sexual obsession? Sexual obsession is fraught with anxiety. The easiest way to think about this is that the urges are similar to those of any addiction. The feelings of going without the connection with this person and sex with them may bring up feelings of loss, emptiness, anxiety, and even panic. All of these feelings are letting us know that we've emotionally entered wrong town, meaning that this experience is not a true self one. Our soul communicates very effectively to us via our feelings regarding what is healthy or not. Healthy union brings calm, solid and serene feelings of warmth and love. These are not the emotionally charged highs and lows that come with a sexual relationship with a narcissist. One minute, you're feeling the hope of being worthy and adored. The next, you're feeling anxious, insecure and abandoned. I really want you to understand that connection and sexual activity with a narcissist is intensely compelling. It's an addiction cycle. As with all addictions, this comes with the high of the emptiness and the craving. It's the high of the emptiness, the craving being fulfilled, which it's known as relief. That's what the high is, the relief. This is akin to a person who is nicotine addicted, craving a cigarette. Then as soon as they draw in the first mouthful of smoke, there's a self-medication of escaping the anxious feelings of not having nicotine. Yet truly as myself and so many other people who were able to give up smoking as that example, with NARP processes, we discovered that there was something much deeper going on emotionally than just nicotine addiction. Smoking was really an act of trying to fill up and numb out an emotional trauma that wasn't yet healed within. And it doesn't work if we don't get to the bottom of why we're emotionally craving something or somebody that's not good for us. Temporary fleeting relief happens when we connect to that thing or that person. Yet the anxiety is never truly fulfilled and healed. It always keeps coming back and it gets worse than ever. Sex with a narcissist is exactly this. It's the same thing. All right, so let's have a look at this. The narcissist as the representative of the unhealed wound. All addictions have this incredibly insidious cycle. They feel like they're granting us relief and yet they're bringing us more of the same of what we're actually needing the relief from. How do you know if you're stuck in this cycle? You know when you're feeling the emptiness and anxieties when you're going without sex with this person. Just like Jeannie. Jeannie craved Gary and his touch and his lovemaking. And then if Gary hadn't contacted her for a few days, when he was professing that he was out of town, Jeannie could barely function. She believed that these feelings of her intense craving must be proof 
that she had intense feelings of love for him. It wasn't until she found out that he'd been having affairs all along and then confronted him that she was dis she discovered it was as if she never existed for him. He completely discarded her. And after feeling beyond broken, Jeannie decided to give NARP healing a go because she didn't know what else to do. And she healed. And in her new healed up thriver life, Jeannie is now with Mark, enjoying safe, comfortable and healthy sex. There is zero anxiety when she's not with him. And as Jeannie said, until I healed, I had no idea what healthy sex was. In Jeannie's previous life, as it was for me and so many of us, we were connected emotionally and sexually to the people who completely and utterly represented our unhealed inner trauma programming. Let me explain this. Let's say that you were brought up in a family with a parent who was unavailable to love you. They were too busy and stuck in their own stuff and ignored you. As a young child, you just, you just wanted connection with them really badly. And you may have tried all sorts of things to be noticed, held and loved to little or no avail. Your inner love code, since you were a very young child, consisted of the people I love ignore me. And this then becomes, I'm not valuable or worthy of love. This then means that you will unconsciously try to prove yourself and earn love regardless of how people love you back. As your now program love code, this represents the people who are attractive to you. The people who you feel the most chemically bonded to fulfill the prophecy of those beliefs. It's your love code. It's your literal inner identity in regard to love. Sex as an adult represents that unmet and unhealed need for connection as a child. The younger part of you seeking resurrection and healing is hooked on wanting the original role models to do it better this time and choosing the same unavailable people and program over and over again. Let's look at when the sex feels so good. Maybe the sex isn't that great. However, you feel like this is the best sex of your life. The more chemically charged it is and trauma bonded, the more heightened the sexual experience can be. Again, think relief. The union of sex takes away the agony of separation from it, which really means the separation from being loved and feeling worthy. Sexual connection with a narcissist is such a powerful bond that can be incredibly confusing and painful. It's a roller coaster. It usually ends in disaster because the cycles of devaluing and discarding inevitably get worse. To add horror to injury, often the narcissist will throw other sexual partners into the mix leaving you feeling even more devastatingly replaced and abandoned. Why is all of this happening? To awaken you to understand what is really going on and why you can't stop getting into bed with a narcissist, even when it means selling your soul out and compromising your dignity. Penny had the horrific experience of throwing herself sexually at her narcissistic ex-lover to try to avoid being replaced and abandoned. Never before had she lowered her values and standards so much as to offer herself sexually on a plate to him, no matter how badly he treated her. 
things got so bad for Penny that she really thought that if she didn't stop doing this to herself that she would die. That's how serious it was. And please know Penny is not alone. You may know exactly what I'm talking about. Penny was urged by other members of this community to start doing the NARP work to get to the bottom of why she'd lost all her honor, dignity and rights and was behaving in this way. Thank goodness Penny stopped pursuing him and turned inwards to start her healing. It saved her life. What she discovered was the young hurt parts of herself that it had experienced her father emotionally abandoning her mother, herself and her siblings and her mother's pain, devastation and emotional absence as a result of this. Penny had literal inner emotional terrors about being abandoned which had never been healed. Unconsciously, the lure of herself sexually was her tool to try to ensure this wouldn't happen to her again. Penny got to the inner work and down to the business of doing NARP Module 1 over and over again to clear out all of that old trauma. Her mother's, herself, herself everything that was there. And then she experienced profound relief. She stopped thinking about her ex-lover and all urges dissolved away. Because she had resurrected her inner being to being a mature, healthy woman instead of a traumatized little girl, Penny started to feel repulsed by the thought of contacting him again. The spell was broken. I really urge you, if you are suffering from sexual compulsion with a narcissist, to feel into your life in the past. Does this person invalidate you and abuse you in ways that are familiar to you? Is this person distrusting of you in ways that remind you of how you were distrusted and your boundaries were violated in the past? Do you again feel like you're having to prove your worth and value in order to be loved? If you don't know exactly what it is that you need to heal, please rest assured that if you do become a NARP member, that NARP bypasses your logical mind and takes you deeply inside yourself to find, release and reprogram the exact traumas that you need to heal. You don't have to work it out. Okay, so let's have a look at your sexual true self and your true life. I have no doubt the great sex, otherwise known as making love, is the highest expression of heaven on earth. This is when two people can melt into each other in total surrender, becoming an explosion of love and bliss infinite times greater than the individual parts of themselves. There is an opportunity within orgasmic conjoining to know the true meaning of oneness. This oneness is true into me see intimacy. The ability to completely be ourselves and naked with another. This takes inner healing and development. It requires the willingness to face our unhealed previous business and heal it. Maybe we've been trying to get love and connection in all the wrong ways. Maybe we're trying to be the incredible lover so that we can keep this person from really knowing our fears, our inadequacies and the parts of ourselves we feel they will reject if they did find them out. I know that this is really confronting stuff. I also know the glory of breaking through from all of the illusions and obsessions regarding narcissistic love to get to the other side. Namely, 
real calm loving and supported lovemaking with somebody who you can be truly naked with as well as a durably sustainable relationship with someone who you can trust and build a life with the narcissist is never going to be this person if you are ready to embrace the healing and development necessary to get to this level, then I'd love to help you. You can start this journey today by clicking the link at the top right of this video. And please know with what's going on in the world right now, with coronavirus, with all of my programs and healing, you don't need to leave your house. You don't need to go to any physical groups and you don't need to travel to therapists. You can do profound and revolutionary healing in the comfort and safety of your own home. And you're also connected to an incredible Thriver Healing global support network that has your back at any time when you need help. Okay, so I hope that this episode has really helped you and I can't wait to answer your comments and your questions below. So keep smiling, keep healing and keep thriving because there's nothing else to do. Lots of love. Bye-bye.